he's a member of the Flat Earth Society, as you well know, and the Flathead Society. This is Jonathan Aguilar with Pro Boxing Fans, joined by Hall of Fame promoter Frank Warren. Frank from Riyadh uh, to Birmingham, it never stops. Uh, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. It's uh, a pleasure to be here today to announce such a fantastic night of boxing up in Birmingham. You got uh, in London. Yeah, we'll, we'll get into that in a second. Uh, you've got uh, Liam Davis uh, headlining against Shabazz Massoud. What are the chances that you reach out to Bob Arum after this fight and say, let's get Inoue over? Well, I believe Inoue is going to go up in weight. Um, I'm hearing he's struggling a bit to make the weight. And if he does that, all those belts will be vacant. You know, our man's only had 16 fights. But in those 16 fights, and certainly since he's been with us, he's won British, Commonwealth, European, and the IBO title. He knew he holding the other four belts in that, in that way. Um, he's with a guy where they got history, amateur history. Shabazz has two wins over him. He's undefeated. And standing in between them up there and listening to both of them, I think we're going to be... Um, we're going to be in for a bit of a bit of a contest, a bit of a fight, because there was certainly no love loss. Uh, I know we're a bit pressed for time, so uh, just moving on to the, the another announcement you're making by the time this interview goes out. Uh, Joe Joyce is fighting Derek Chisora. Uh, you know, obviously, you know what's, you know, you know there'll be some naysayers saying Chisora this, Chisora that, but I guess if he wants to fight, it's not up to you to tell him otherwise, right? I advised him to retire a little way back, but he's came to us. He said he wanted to fight. He's fighting on. Um, him and Joe, I think, is a is a you know is a fight which is jeopardy for both of them. Derek loses this, it's all over, and he will have to retire, because it'd be, otherwise he'd become a, just a, you know, I don't want him winding up being one of those guys they, they want to fight just to get, get, get his name on his record. So it's a tough, tough fight for him. And also for Joe, Joe, Joe can't afford to lose. You know, the winner of this will get, get himself back into, into, the, into bigger fights. The loser, it's all over. How far did talks with Bacoli get? Uh, we spoke to him. I don't know. I didn't have to personally have the talks, but I don't know. What, I don't know what held it up. I mean, Joe never had no problem with that fight, by the way. Just, just moving on, obviously, to, to the weekend. Didn't go uh, your man's way, but there is a rematch uh, in place. Uh, how you said to Talksport yesterday that he's going to take the rematch. How how soon after the fight did he tell you that? He said it in the ring when he was doing his interview. He said, "I, I want the rematch." And then I told him to hold on. I said, just go and think about it. Spend some time with your family. And I spoke to him two days ago. I rang up, see how he was. He said, I want the rematch. So, and that was it. So officially, though, has he activated the, the clause in the contract? The contract's already signed. Right. The contract was signed before the fight. Uh, obviously, a major talking point was, uh, you know, some people felt that there were too many voices in the corner. Sugar Hill, John Fury and Andy Lee. What do you make of people saying that? And did that have an effect on the outcome? Everybody's entitled to their opinion. And that will, I'm sure, be uh, something that they'll deal with internally. Let them get on with it and do that. You know, for me, Tyson put in a magnificent performance, showed what he's all about. Boxing skills, um, absolute true grit, you know, the chin, how he come through. He, got, he didn't get hit with one shot, he got hit with a few shots and got himself back together. And, you know, at the end, he even won the last round, according to all the judges and myself. Carl Froch felt that Fury was a bit, you know, nervous going into the fight. Did you see any different demeanour from Tyson? Was there anything different about him going into the fight? I don't pay any credence to what Carl Froch says about Tyson because he's a hater. He's a member of the Flat Earth Society, as you well know, and the Flat Head Society. And uh, just sort of closing out, uh, I saw some reports in the Daily Mail that 20 million people reportedly illegally streamed the fight. Uh, did you see those reports and, you know, what was the impact? Uh, obviously, you wanted the fight to do well on TNT box office. It, was it has done well, but those, you know, that's what they're fighting against all the time. And, you know, all you're doing, you're stealing from the boxer's purses. That's what you're doing. Those guys are entertaining you. You do those illegal streams, you are stealing from their purses. Fact of life.
just just lastly, uh, you know, a lot of people's questioning, you know, the the impact on, on Fury's legacy. I know you you said, listen, like a lot of the greats have had defeats in the past, but do you feel like he needs to win that rematch to, you know, justify his place, or do you think he is already there? I think he's there, and I think he needs to win the rematch, and that's cemented because at the moment everybody is saying that uh, Usyk is the is is one of the greats, which he is, by the way. Look what he's done. He's done everything that's been asked him. As a professional, he's he not unified the belts in the cruiserweight division and in the heavyweight division. He's been absolutely brilliant, but so has Tyson in what he's done. And it takes two to make an epic fight. It was a close fight. Two, when you see a great fight, it's not one person. It's a great fight because it's competitive. It's a competitive fight. And T Tyson is a warrior, a true warrior. As is Usyk, they gave everything. Never left nothing in, in that ring at all, neither of them. In October, we're going to see who it's taken the most out of. Just lastly, Frank, uh, obviously we've got this show, we've got uh, you know next week the 5v5, but something away from this, obviously you've had a long history with Mike Tyson, he's fighting Jake Paul uh, July 20th. What's your thoughts on, on that fight? Should it be happening and you know what do you make of it? Uh, look, it's, it's like the car crash, isn't it? You're driving along and you slow down because you want to see it and people would do the same with a fight. Should have, what's how old is he now? 58 year old man be fighting? Of course he shouldn't be fighting. Jake Paul, I've got a lot of time for Jake. He's a very intelligent guy. He's, his, his manager is a really, really good guy in the key I, I mean, I like them all. And, and they put, put in an event together that everybody will buy into. But men, you know, I don't think Mike Tyson should be fighting. But I'll tell you something, they're two, two minute rounds. That first round, you'll get vintage Mike Tyson. And then we'll see where it goes from there. Magnificent 7 July 20th. Don't miss it. Frank, appreciate your time. Don't miss it. It's going to be a great show. It's a great concept, great show. I think this will be the best out of a lot of them. And they're all even money fights. Frank, all the best. Cheers.